Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for February 8th, 2024. From a brief survey of the world strategic situation, you come to the inescapable conclusion that the leaders of the Western liberal democracies have lost their collective minds. They're engaged in neocon wars of, of no strategic benefit or no improvement of security for the populations they say they're defending. They're using austerity measures through private banks, the International Monetary Fund, the, the central banks. These are driven by the demands of the corporate cartels, which fund the political parties and the politicians and control the media that lie to you about what's happening. Let's just start with the continued support of the Netanyahu regime as an example of this collective insanity. The International Court of Justice in its ruling was very clear that the question of genocide is on the agenda and more importantly, stopping genocide. And in their provisional measures to stop the genocide, what they said is that all nations providing military and other support for Israel must cease and desist, or they'll be judged as complicit in the genocide. Instead, there's no let up to the Israeli offensive in Gaza and no cutback from Western countries of support and protection for Israel. There are now over 1 million Palestinians in Rafah, crowded into a tiny area as an Israeli ground assault is moving in. There are nearly 30,000 dead Palestinians um, in operations which began four months ago following the October 7th attack by Hamas. Now, one can blame Hamas for uh, starting this, but there's no excuse for this continuing. And the, the treachery of the, the Western governments who say they are concerned about the Palestinian casualties, such as President Biden, why do they then continue the, the policy of supporting the attacks from the Netanyahu regime? Now, we, we see this accelerating through the shutting off of funds to the UN uh, uh, Relief and, and Works Agency, UNRWA. The idea that there were possibly several people in UNRWA who were working with Hamas in the attacks on October 7th doesn't justify cutting off the lifeline of support for over 6 million Palestinian refugees. This is, again, complicity in genocide. Now, we also see the escalation of, of war, the U.S. and the United Kingdom bombing Iraq, bombing Syria, bombing Yemen, uh, threatening Iran. Uh, yesterday, The Economist magazine, which is a publication basically re reflecting the views of the city of London, said that the U.S. threats are not credible unless Iran is hit. In other words, it's okay to bomb in Iraq and Syria, but if you want to stop so-called Iranian support for terrorism, which, by the way, has not been proven that it's existing, but if you want to stop it, you have to hit Iran. In other words, escalate the war further. Then we see the, the Blinken shuttle diplomacy. Uh, and what do you see? He was in Cairo and Doha yesterday, and the leaders of those countries told him they want a ceasefire. They want legitimate support for an independent Palestinian state. And what did Blinken do? Well, the crocodile tears were flowing from his lifeless eyes as he was saying how much he's concerned about the casualties of innocent civilians. And then he met with Netanyahu and promised to continue U.S. support for Netanyahu's efforts in Gaza. <clears throat> now, is, is he not listening to what Netanyahu and his coalition party members are saying, that they intend to ethnically cleanse Gaza? Did he not read the report of the International Court of Justice? He's supposedly a lawyer. Is he blind to this? Well, that's what I mean about collective insanity. To see someone cry crocodile tears while continuing this assault shows you that there's not just hypocrisy here, but an evil intent that's driving the policy. 
And then look at Ukraine. Uh, the Republicans have effectively blocked funding from the United States, the next round of funding, another $60 billion on top of the $113 billion already given to, to Ukraine. That's a good development because the war is lost. But they're still trying to figure out how to get more money into Ukraine. The, the war should never have happened in the first place. What, where were the diplomats? Well, one word, Minsk. They tried to, the, the Russians worked with other countries, in particular France and Germany, to get an agreement to resolve the security concerns of Putin. And what do we find out? That the French and German leaders lied in signing Minsk, and it was just an attempt to buy time to prepare the Ukrainian army for attacks against Russia. Meanwhile, Biden keeps pushing. Uh, yesterday, Biden accused Trump of, quote, doing what Putin wants, unquote, by stopping the funds from the, stopping the Senate and the House Republicans from supporting the funds that Biden is asking for. This is an attempt, a cynical attempt to replay Russiagate, despite the fact that Russiagate has been exposed as a fraud. But they keep playing it and keep playing it. Why? Well, this is the collective lunacy. Then you have Schumer, who makes Biden look sane. Schumer said, asked, will Republicans, quote, stand with Trump in support of chaos and Vladimir Putin, unquote? Now, the Putin theme reverberates throughout virtually everything in terms of who's to blame for the crisis. Uh, your baby's sick, blame Putin. You can't afford gas and medical care, blame Putin. You can't make money on farming in Europe, blame Putin. The height of this insanity was the Eurocrat Ursula von der Leyen, the, the president of the European Commission, who said the reason that farmers are driving tractors through European cities on the whole, the whole of Europe. There's a, a tractor cade descending on Rome today and tomorrow. In Greece, in Spain, joining the French, the Dutch, the German farmers. And what are they protesting? The green policy and the, the loss of energy and the high cost of energy, which means they can't afford to farm. They're going out of business. And their land is going to be sold off to the speculative vultures of BlackRock, Vanguard, uh, Archer Daniels Midland, and, and the grain cartels. So what does von der Leyen say? She, again, she cries crocodile tears. The, the poor farmers are feeling the effects of climate change and the impact of the Russian war. Blame Putin for your own idiocy. Now look at Germany. Germany is, after Ukraine, ground zero for the collateral damage of this proxy war of NATO against Russia. Yesterday, they issued figures that showed a sharp decline of industrial output. It's already acknowledged that Germany is in a recession, but manufacturing has fallen 3% from December 2022 to December 2023. In the same period, building construction is down 3.4%. Chemical production, down 7.6%. Exports, Germany has thrived as an export economy. Its exports are down 1.5%. And the costs for electricity for industry, it costs German industrial firms and, and the, the Mittelstand, small and medium-sized companies, twice as much as it does for their uh, for, uh, French firms. Don't forget, France gets 62% of its electricity from nuclear power, and Germany, because of the green mandate, shut down nuclear power. On top of that, the bombing of the North Stream pipelines, the sanctions against Russia, and electricity prices in Germany are now twice what they are in France. So what do we see? We see more war. We see more debt, more austerity for the productive sectors, while bailouts for speculators, which only increase the overall debt on the backs of the taxpayers who are losing jobs and losing profits. Not a very bright future, is it? Well, actually it is if you can look outside of the bubble of the transatlantic region, look to Asia, look to Africa, nations of the former colonial world 
are now moving into, they're, they're leapfrogging into the, the next generation of energy production, of transportation with high-speed rail, with water and power management. That's what's being targeted by the Western military industrial financial complex. It's not that, that they're just trying to preserve their edge. They're trying to prevent the rest of the world from moving ahead. And that's not acceptable to the leaders of the global south. They're rejecting the failed neoliberal system of the Anglo-American establishment. And so should we. We in the West should reject that. Are we doomed to go to war with them? You know, go to war against the global south? Or can we join them? And that's what we're asking you to do. Join with us, with the LaRouche Organization and the Schiller Institute, to forge a path of cooperation and collaboration for mutual benefit, for economic development with the global south. Instead of going to war with them, work with them. And in the process, let's take power away from the corporate cartels that insist that the world is a zero-sum game, and if those other countries make some gains, it will be at your expense. That's the foolish economic thinking behind the permanent war which we seem to be stuck in. I want you to listen to the dialogue I had with Helga Zepp LaRouche yesterday. I'll append it at the bottom of the description page where you'll hear from her a strategic assessment uh, that will give you a sense of why we're on a Titanic unless we get off, but there's a, a lifeboat, which is not just a lifeboat, but a better future ahead if we can adopt this idea of a new paradigm. Tomorrow's Friday, I'll take your questions and comments. Send them to me at harleysch at gmail.com. Hello, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Support our independence to produce videos like these. Become a member of the LaRouche organization at thelarouche.org slash member. By becoming a member for $25 or more, You'll get special access to the EIR Alert Daily Briefing and Weekly Magazine, which is what I read to stay on top of things.